These are not MRIs. They're TikToks. Hundreds of custom selected TikToks. Different dances, indoors and outdoors, entirely different vibes. But this is not to compare trendy dances. It's to help computers learn to see. So I want you to guess why a wide range of TikTok videos would be useful to help a computer to see and try to remember your answer. So I'm gonna give you some context first before I explain why this one researcher holed up in her room finding 600 perfect TikToks. It's not a bad data set. You, you get to watch a lot of dance videos, but after a while, believe me, you get very tired. <laughs> Okay, so you hear about machine learning and artificial intelligence, and maybe you imagine some machine just vacuuming in all the world's information. But a better analogy is flashcards. On the front, you've got the question, and on the back, the answer. There are different data sets for different tasks. For language, it's sentences the model can learn to complete by checking the right answers. For an image generator, it would be a bunch of pictures with definitions. These answers on the flashcards, they are called ground truth. The computer can rely on them being right. Now imagine all the stuff we want AI to do, from transcription to generating voices. If you don't have answers on those flashcards, ground truth, they're kind of useless. And just like flashcards, the more varied and better your ground truth, the more an AI model can learn and test. So here is the tricky part. What do you train an AI on? if you want it to make three-dimensional images from two-dimensional ones with just one viewpoint. It's like a puzzle, right? I mean, you need ground truth to know if your AI or model is getting things right. Yasmin started with Render People. It's this great data set with ground truth because it includes video of people and real 3D scans to go with it. So you know exactly where they are in space. An AI could look at these people and learn how people work in 3D. But there weren't enough flashcards there. Yasmin and her co-author didn't have enough backgrounds, enough variety. We were interested in the motion. We were interested in the movement of people, how they appear when they move and they go through different uh, appearances and poses. That sounds a lot like a TikTok. Was that your guess why? When I first saw this paper, I thought it was going to be because all the TikToks were doing the same dance or something, but it's actually the opposite. It's because all the TikToks are so different. Yasmin knew that they'd be good for training since not only do they show people clearly, they're also full of other stuff, backgrounds, jackets, different shapes. To use them, Yasmin had to create a 3D picture. She had the phone's point of view. So she used a program to remove the background and another program to estimate how a person was moving in 3D space. She ended up with 600 videos. And her program could look at one part, see the depth, make a prediction how the depth would look later, and check her work, like flipping over a flashcard. I made my own TikTok dance called I Cried in the Shower This Morning. And Yasmin was able to run it through her model to create a 3D mesh. But it gets weirder than that. So you remember this thing? I paid Kim and Coleman a dollar each to do this. And if we used the right music, we would get demonetized. But you know the mannequin challenge, it involved everyone from Hillary Clinton to James Corden. It is the most James Corden-y thing imaginable. But it is also a data set. Remember the flashcards. Imagine you want computers to learn to see depth in real situations. You could set up tons of cameras in a circle to scan everything. High, sky, straight on, like render people. And you'd know all the angles. But then you would lose the real world situation. Or you can use the TikTok data to approximate ground truth. But they are all moving around a ton. If everyone is trying to stay still, it's kind of like a bunch of cameras taking pictures at the exact same time, with all the messiness of the real world built in. It is a really interesting ground truth. So Google researchers created a data set of frozen people using tons of mannequin challenge videos, 2000 videos of people not moving, and that taught a model. These became flashcards for a model to guess if a camera moves five feet away, what a scene will look like. These videos included tons of variety, variety in settings, types of people, everything. 
It was gold. It's like thousands and thousands of flashcards for the model to learn from. I spoke to a couple of researchers who... Sorry, are we, are we done? Or... Okay. All right, thanks. <laughs> okay, so anyway, they used the mannequin challenge not for training, but to kind of grade how well their model did. It was ground truth for them to evaluate their experiment. One paper shows how to learn the geometry of a scene to fill in missing parts in photos. See how here they took an image, painted out part of it, and then they used their knowledge of the scene to fill it back in. You can see the real angle here in their program's version here. One of the paper's authors told me the mannequin challenge helped them know that they nailed it in any location. We want to make sure this works for image in the wild. The user randomly provide the images. You don't know it's indoor or outdoor or it could be anywhere. It was similar for the paper Virtual Correspondence, in which researchers figured out how to match points in 3D scenes from different angles. They could put in images, predict the pose, and intersecting points, and match them up for everything, from movie scenes to scenes from Friends. I like Friends. I watch it more than 10 times. And then I was, oh, maybe I can use this this thing in my paper, a screenshot, screenshot, and I just run it. <laughs> These researchers used the mannequin challenge as ground truth to check their work. And the many backgrounds in the mannequin challenge were priceless because the variety put their program through its paces. Also, they checked their model against a Carnegie Mellon data set too, where people stood in a big bubble filled with cameras. This thing had perfect 3D scans of people and video. It had ground truth, but the ground truth was still narrow because it was in this sphere thing. The mannequin challenge was in the real world. The mannequin challenge was like a full flashcard set with answers they could check. Mannequin challenge provides a nice thing because everyone's kind of acting still. And then people go around the scene, so you can kind of get these kind of extreme scenarios. So what to make of all this weird stuff? At first, I was trying to get these researchers to say how creative they are, but they were like, it's not a big deal. But I will say this, I highlighted the TikTok data set in the mannequin challenge, but those papers are also built on top of a 3D Facebook data set created by manually putting dots on people's faces and 10,000 real estate videos that helped computers learn camera positions. The machines, they are learning, but for now, we are still the teachers. They are only as good as the flashcards, and we're the ones making them.